So now let's return to our sealed class hierarchy for a second and dive more deeply into what data classes are. So you see here both easy and medium and hard are all defined as data classes. Data classes are Kotlin's way of providing very concise, immutable data types. By defining a class as a data class, it means that it is going to generate methods such as equals hash code into string automatically for you. What this allows us to do is perform equality comparisons on instances of these data classes and treat them as equal if the data they contain is equal. So as an example, let's explore what this looks like. So we can say val entity one equals entity factory dot create, and we'll create an easy entity. And then we're gonna create another version of this. And then now we can check their equality comparison. So we can say if entity one equals entity two, printillin, they are equal, else printillin, they are not equal. So now if we run this, what will we see? They are not equal. And that's to be expected. That's because if we come back up to our factory, we'll notice that we're creating different unique IDs each time. So even though the, the name is the same, the unique ID is different. So now let's update this and see what it looks like if we pass the same data in. So in this case, we could create an easy directly. In this case, we'll pass in ID comma name. And then we will duplicate this for entity two. And so now if we run this, we're going to expect to see they are equal. And of course they are. So this is really convenient. This allows us to represent data within our applications and compare this data no matter where it comes from. And as long as those properties are all the same, we're going to be able to evaluate these as true. Now, another really interesting thing that data classes give us are effective copy constructors. So we could create an instance of entity two by copying entity one. So you can see entity one dot copy. And because this is a direct copy, if we run this once again, we're going to see they are equal. However, we could also use named arguments with the copy constructor to change the value. So let's say we only wanted to change the name. We could say name equals new name. And once again, if we rerun this, we're going to see they are not equal. So you can see changing a single property in the data class is going to impact whether or not two instances evaluate to true or not when compared. Now, one thing to notice is this is comparing the value of the data themselves. If we wanted to use referential comparison, we could add a third equal sign here, and this will check whether or not it's the exact same reference or not. So in this case, they are not equal. However, this isn't all that surprising since the data was also equal. So what about if we revert this and make this an exact copy again? So before, if we were just using two equal sign, the data would be the same. So it would print they are equal. However, by using three equal signs and using referential equality, we see they are not equal. That's because it's not the same exact reference of the object. If we updated this to be entity one equal equal equals entity one and run this, now we'll see they are equal. So that's just one way in which we can check whether or not we have the exact same object or if it's two different objects that have the same data. Now also keep in mind that these equality comparisons are working off of the generated equals and hash code methods generated by the compiler when indicating a data class. However, we could update this to change how the equals or hash code is evaluated. And to do that, we would do it like any other class. We could add a class body and then we could simply override equals and or 
hash code. Now, as in Java best practice, if you're going to override one of these, you should really override both of them, and you have to follow the same rules, but you have that freedom if you would like to.